Thank you to Pietro Bertazzi, and I will kindly ask Federico Tani to take the floor after him. Uh, while waiting for Federico, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Bertazzi, and I would like to outline something. Uh, Ornella Cilona will talk later. Our, uh, she's our assistant, of, uh, and she will talk about many of these aspects uh, we have uh, uh, we have um, analyzed um, some methods and we found one who is uh, uh, useful for us. For us, the Global Report Initiative is an automatic uh, method. So we take for granted some of the behaviors, uh, behaviors that are considered as positive when we have uh, the report by the Global Reporting Initiative, because it is not possible to verify them all. So we either combine all these aspects, uh, for instance, if uh, uh, a multinational is uh, uh, working with uh, children or they are uh, uh, using slaves, um, if we have this sort of monitoring and uh, uh, analysis that can be conducted, uh, of course, we can combine all these factors. Um, this is a kind of provocation that we accepted, and we will go on with uh, uh, Chilona after to talk about it. So uh, if we consider all the levels and uh, uh, consider the uh, timing of the certificates, we'll try to give the answers. I've already introduced uh, Federico. What we ask in a, a structure like SA8000, uh, um, so we will ask him to present uh, this uh, SA8000. So we ask what is the contribution by SA8000 that it can give to the work that we are doing in order to improve working condition and living conditions inside supply chains. English, Italian. So, um, SA8000. Um, SA8000 is created by a, an organization called SAI, which means Social Accountability International. It was established in 1997, and their headquarters are in New York. It's basically a multi-stakeholder initiative, and SAI produced uh, uh, this uh, standard called SA8000. It's uh, currently the leading standard uh, from a certification point of view. It's a social certification. It uh, analyzes companies based on eight sectors. These sectors are uh, go from forced labor to child labor, discrimination, freedom of association. It does not include environmental aspects. It just includes social aspects. And uh, there's a ninth section which regards um, management and managing systems, which are crucial for the implementation of SA8000. So basically what happens when a company wishes to certify itself, they can contact, SAI is split in two entities basically. Social Accountability International is the proprietor of the standard SA8000. Then there's SAS, Social Accountability Accreditation Systems, because to be certified SA8000, you have to contact what they call certification bodies, or CBs. CBs are private uh, organizations which are accredited by SAS, and they are authorized to, con uh, to conduct or perform audits, control audits on organizations and institutions that wish to certify themselves. So if, uh, once you've contact, uh, contacted an authorized CB, and this CB has conducted the necessary audits on your company or organization, you can then uh, claim certification, SA8000 certification. Of course, you have to be uh, in compliance with all the various uh, requirements of the standard. So um, Gabriele was asking me, um, how can this help with the supply chain? Well, uh, Mr. De Jong first said many of the things I would have uh, said as well. Certifications today and standardization certifications today are crucial, and they're already present in many countries. 
let's not think only about countries where trade unions are already very developed, for example, Italy. Um, I'm Italian, I'm talking about Italy. Italy is one of the countries with the highest number of certification, let's say a thousand certifications already. Why? Because it was easy for them to, to obtain the certification because they did not have to work very hard for it because the standards were already pretty high and so they were already in compliance with the SA 1000 standard. But SA 1000 is a standard that's thought to be applied worldwide, also in countries where there is no trade union at all. And in those countries, uh, certifications such as SA 1000 can, of course, improve working conditions and, uh, and uh, both in the workplace and of the workers themselves. So concerning the supply chain, um, there, it, it, mm, there is no obligation to certify the supply chain. And of course, it's one of the hardest uh, points in, in general. It's always uh, very difficult to identify the companies that are part of the supply chain because companies usually do not want to reveal their, their suppliers. And uh, furthermore, supp supply chain uh, subjects are companies of their own. So uh, the, 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 the client does not have all that. I mean, they have the power through uh, the way they ask for uh, the, the, they, they ask the production of goods to their suppliers, but they, don't, they can't directly influence. So um, to answer your question on the suppliers, it, it is the big question. Every, every single meeting on SA 1000, there's this discussion on the supply chain and suppliers. So I, I'm not sure I have a, an answer on that. Thank you, Federico. We have uh, a limited time to end up uh, this session, uh, but uh, Walter Kowalski will have to leave uh, before. Uh, so I will change the agenda uh, to leave the floor to the speakers that have already uh, had their presentation. I will ask to Kowalski that if he wants to uh, 